As you know, we do a lot of measurements in science and engineering. It's very important to have the most accurate results, small error, like going to moon, a small, tiny measurement in the distance can result going to another uh, planet or get lost in the solar system. So we're going to show reliability of our measurements. Guys, doesn't matter what we use for measurement, the tool that we are using is going to have certain accuracy. That means we are going to have certain amount of error in measurements. So these errors could be larger or smaller, smaller depending on the tools that you are using. Suppose you want to measure volume. Is it fair to say that in a laboratory, you can measure volume with a graduate cylinder, use a syringe, use a burette, use a pipette, and use a volumetric flask. So between these five tools, which one gives you better accuracy? Which one is a better tool? Well, depending on the size of the volume, if you are making one liter or 500 ml or 250 ml, you want to use a volumetric flask because you are more accurate and you're very expensive. If you're using a smaller volume, so smaller than 50 ml pipette will give you more accuracy. And graduate cylinder is not as accurate as any of these tools. So suppose you are reading a paper and you get a volume. How do you know which one of these tools were used? And how do you know the measurement? How accurate is it? What is the reliability? What is the amount of the error in the measurement that you're simply getting the volume? You may say, you may see that volume is 5 ml. Or it may say volume is 5.0 ml or volume is 5.00 ml. So as you might remember, these three volumes have different significant figures. The one which has larger significant figures is more reliable. What does that tell you? It tells you the one, the number, the volume, which gives you more significant figures has been measured with more reliable tools of measurement. So as we said, anytime you do a measurement, there is certain amount of error. And I'm going to show you how in addition to accuracy, there's also precision of measurement. So on the first slide, I beg your pardon, on the first picture, you're seeing that all of these hits are on the eyeball. The eyeball, and can I say, this is accurate. Getting exactly to the point that you want. It's like a measurement which shows the real volume. That's accurate. It's also precise why we have done five measurements. They're very close together. So that's our definition for accuracy, how close a measurement is to the true value. And what is precision? Precision means how close our set of measurements to each other. Look at, look at this picture. Do you see all of the results are far from eyeball? but they are very close together. So is it fair to say that these results are precise? Why? Because they are very close together. But they are not accurate because in none of the cases, you hit the eyeball, in none of the cases, you got the true value. And if I go to the next picture, do you see that all these points are all over the place, you are not close together, so they are not precise. And sorry. And 
they are not hitting the eyeball, they are not close to what you want, the real true value. So in every measurement, we have certain amount of inaccuracy. You might have lack of preciseness. So we decide to minimize this by using the right tool. We also show, of course, we don't show the picture of the tool that we use in a scientific paper, but we show the reliability based on number of significant figures. So again, I want to refresh your memory of significant figures. You have, you had these in chem 2 a So definition of significant figures. It's total number of known figures that you get from a measurement tool. That's what measurement tool is giving you plus one estimated digit. You always have one estimated digit and only one estimated digit, not two or three. So if you see this record of measurement, and if I say 2.76 centimeter, you know, you're sure, you're sure that the length is 2.7 centimeter and you estimated the last digit. So this last digit could be five or four, you are estimating it's not exact. So you have three significant figure here. So two and seven are certain, six is estimated. It could be five, it could be four, it could be three. So you're uncertain, but you are simply guessing by looking at the two. And I'm going to give you an example. What do I mean by uncertain figures? What do I mean by guessing? But I have two known figures, one estimated, so I have a total of three significant figures here. And if I go to the next slide, I want to give you an example, guys. Suppose you're asked to measure the mass of a tennis ball. And suppose we tell you this tennis ball is really 54.44178 grams. So you, have, you must have used a tool or a calculation that you have real true weight. Now, if I use three different tools of measurement, one is a bathroom scale, and then another one which is more accurate than a bathroom scale, like a triple beam balance, and a third balance, which is analytical balance, very accurate. And in case number one, Do you see, I'm doing one measurement, bathroom scale says this tennis ball is zero grams or zero kilograms. The lap balance says 54.4 grams. Analytical balance, it says 54.4419. And then in second measurement, zero bathroom scale, zero kilogram measured by bathroom scale. And lab balance is showing a weight of 54.5 grams. Analytical balance, which is digital, much more sensitive and accurate, is giving you 54.4417 grams. And then in, a, in an average, in a third measurement, I get 0.1 kilogram from the bathroom balance. 54.3 grams from lap balance and 54.4417 grams. This is from the analytical balance. Is it fair to say, if I compare my results here, the only change is on last digit, which is estimated figure. And do you see that in this case, my actual weight is very close to what I measured. That means this balance, very expensive balance, of course, it's giving me good accuracy. Why? It's very close to the real one. It also give me <clears throat> good 
precision because look, except for the last digit, the rest of the numbers are the same. So the data are close together. That means they are precise. They are close to the true value. That means they are accurate. By the way, this is the triple beam balance. I wanted you to, if you haven't been in the lab, to figure what it looks like. Although I think we did some lab in previous semester. I'm not sure. In previous semester, we were online. I'm not sure if you saw this picture, but many of you have taken chem tour before. You have gone to the lab. You already know that a triple beam balance is not as accurate as a digital balance. So do you see, I'm looking at one significant figure, three significant figure, and six significant figure. So if you are not seeing whether the balance is analytical, but you can see number of significant figure, six significant figure versus three significant figure is saying that the tool was better in case of analytical balance. It's more reliable. It has less error. And when you compare three significant figure with one significant figure, you can say, yes, of course, this triple beam balance is more reliable, less error than bathroom scale. Significant figures are showing accuracy and precision. So they are result of uncertainty in the tool of measurement. And as I said, the last digit is estimated. 